Welcome to the Pencil Bob channel. I hope you enjoy my stories. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification icon so you never miss out. Now on with the stories. Well, I can't believe the situation with our HOA has gotten this out of control. Let me tell you what's been going on. It feels as though it's ripped from a poorly scripted TV drama. So we've got this 84-year-old woman who's been president of our HOA board for way too long. At first, I didn't pay much attention to HOA stuff, but over the past year or so, it's become impossible to ignore how power-hungry and controlling she's gotten. It started with little things, nitpicky violation notices for the tiniest infractions. My neighbor got a warning because his grass was half an inch too tall one week. I got cited because apparently the shade of beige I repainted my shutters wasn't the exact approved color. It was ridiculous. But then it escalated. This president started changing bylaws left and right to give herself and the board more power. She stacked the board with her friends and neighbors so they'd always vote her way. And get this. They manipulated the proxy voting system so that if someone submits a blank proxy, the board gets to decide how to use that vote. Talk about sketchy. I started talking to some of the other homeowners and realized a lot of us were fed up but felt powerless to do anything. Our property management company is useless. They're basically just glorified rent collectors at this point. I heard through the grapevine that our last management company actually quit because they couldn't deal with the president anymore. And now our current company is threatening to drop us if she doesn't step down. It's a mess. Things really came to a head at our annual HOA meeting yesterday. I couldn't go because of work, but my next-door neighbor filled me in on all the drama. Apparently it devolved into a shouting match, with homeowners yelling at the board and each other. Someone even threatened to call the cops, which would have been extra embarrassing since we're already banned from our usual meeting spot after the police had to break up a fight at the last meeting. I can't believe it's come to this in our quiet little subdivision. I've been doing some research, and it looks like we might be able to remove her if we can get a two-thirds majority vote from all the homeowners. The problem is, I'm not sure how to rally enough support. A lot of people seem checked out or intimidated, and the ones who do care are scared of retaliation from the board if they speak up. I'm thinking about trying to send out an informational letter to all the homeowners explaining the situation and why we need change, but I'm worried the board will find some way to block it or punish me for stirring things up. They've already hinted at creating a rule against sending out unauthorized communications about HOA business. It's so frustrating feeling like we're being held hostage by this petty tyrant and her minions. This was supposed to be a nice place to live, not a dictatorship. My wife and I have even talked about moving, but we love our house and shouldn't have to leave because of HOA drama. I've started venting to my co-workers about it, and they think I should just ignore it all. Easy for them to say when they don't have to deal with constant harassment over the height of their hedges or the color of their mailbox. It's affecting my quality of life at this point. The whole situation has me stressed out. I'm losing sleep worrying about what violation notice might show up in my mailbox next, or if they'll try to fine me thousands of dollars over some made-up infraction. I've started obsessively checking the HOA Facebook page and next door for any updates or gossip. My wife says I need to let it go and stop getting so worked up, but I can't help feeling like someone needs to stand up to this injustice. Why should we let one cranky old lady and her cronies push us all around? There's got to be a way to take back control of our neighborhood. I've been daydreaming about dramatic ways to confront the board. Maybe showing up at the next meeting with a megaphone and a list of grievances, or going door to door to rally the neighbors for a protest. But realistically, I know that would probably backfire and make things worse. So for now, I'm stuck stewing in my frustration and trying to figure out next steps. Should I risk sending out that letter to homeowners? Try to organize a secret meeting of concerned residents? Look into legal options? Or just keep my head down and hope things eventually change? I hate feeling so powerless in my own community. This was supposed to be the American dream, owning a home in a nice neighborhood. Instead, it's turned into a nightmare of pettiness and control. All I want is to be able to enjoy my property in peace, without constant interference. Every time I drive through the neighborhood now, I find myself glaring at the president's perfectly manicured lawn and immaculate exterior. Must be nice to never get citations when you make all the rules. I'm half tempted to fling some dandelion seeds onto her precious grass under cover of darkness. But I know that's just petty, and probably against some HOA rule. 
I've started avoiding my neighbors because I'm tired of everyone complaining about the HOA situation but refusing to actually do anything about it. It's like we're all trapped in this cycle of learned helplessness. The whole thing is taking a toll on my mental health. I catch myself obsessing over every little thing I do outside my house, paranoid that it might trigger a violation notice. Did I bring my trash cans in quickly enough? Is my car parked at the exact right angle in the driveway? It's exhausting living under this constant scrutiny. I know in the grand scheme of things, HOA drama isn't the end of the world. But when you're living it day in and day out, it really wears you down. I just want to be able to relax and enjoy my home without walking on eggshells all the time. For now, I guess I'll keep documenting everything and trying to build support among the neighbors. Maybe if enough of us band together, we can finally make some changes. But I'm not holding my breath. At this rate, I half expect to get a violation notice for my grass being the wrong shade of green or my mailbox flag being angled incorrectly. Welcome to life in HOA hell. Anyone want to stage a coup with me? Get a lawyer that specializes in HOA disputes and review the bylaws. It's possible that you can get your neighbors to give you their proxy votes, and if you can do that successfully, you may be able to remove her. Again review the bylaws and consult a lawyer as to the proper course of action. At my old HOA, the board could hold unlimited proxies but owners could only hold one or two as the bylaws were written. This gave the board an advantage in the large condo association. OP needs to look at what the bylaws say about the proxies, who can hold them, and such. The bylaws may allow for an action without a meeting, where you can collect enough signatures to remove the board. As mentioned above, an HOA attorney can figure out the best course of action. What state are you in? Generally, you should follow your documents to the T. You will have to 1. Get enough members to call for a recall vote. This is usually well below a majority. 2. Have a recall election with a three new slate of candidates. She could be recalled by a minority and voted back in. I am surprised you say two-thirds to vote her out. That's large. Your documents will have to lay out the specifics. By the way, your definition of proxy above is exactly how it's supposed to work. Members are giving their proxy to the board president. That's more than fine. You just don't agree with the outcome. A lot of things will influence the outcome. What are the demographics of your HOA? Are you majority rental? Are you a condo or SFH? Are you under serious financial issues? Low reserves, bad maintenance, with dues artificially kept low to keep the members happy? Understand all these items, but and then you will have to campaign against her. Why your vision is better. Who do you want to replace her? Best be willing to step up yourself. Knock on doors, kiss babies, shake hands, just like a political campaign. The board can't create a rule that you can't mail someone a letter. Also, if you decide to run, they have to include a one-pager from you on your background, your platform. A president is not omnipotent, so your issue is not just with her but the rest of the board. They have as much power as she does. She's just the figurehead, so think about recalling everyone and having a new slate. You will need some like-minded members to join your force. By the way, you are right on one thing. The property management company has no power over the board. The PM works for the board. One last thing. Knowledge is power. Know your state laws and documents, spend time on them. But one thing I noticed, while lots of hot air flying, what's the core set of issues you're dealing with? You have a president and board that is not doing what you want to do, whatever that is, edit. You don't need a lawyer yet unless you have extra funds to waste. Understand your docs, lay out what you want to ultimately accomplish, removing a board, the board is just a first step. The facts are simple. I'm in this crazy situation with my HOA board president, and I just don't know what to do anymore. This guy is seriously off his rocker, and I'm starting to worry about my safety and the whole neighborhood. So let me back up and give you the full story. I live in this condo complex in Southern California. Yeah, I know, SoCal sucks, but it's where I'm at for now. Anyway, we've got this HOA board, and the current president is this dude who's an ex-con. Now I try not to judge people for their past mistakes, you know. Everyone deserves a second chance and all that. But this guy, man, he is something else. First off, he's got a serious anger management problem. I'm talking yelling and getting aggressive with people over the smallest things. It's like walking on eggshells whenever he's around. And he's always around, cause he lives here too. Then there's the way he runs things. It's like he thinks he's some kind of mob boss or something. He lets his buddies get away with breaking all the HOA rules. 
Like one of his friends got this garage door that's totally the wrong color for our complex. It looks awful, sticks out like a sore thumb. But does our illustrious president do anything about it? Nope. No fines, no warnings, nothing. Oh, and get this. He lets the gardeners hang out in his garage and drink beer while they're supposed to be working. I mean, come on, that can't be safe, right? Operating lawn equipment after knocking back a few cold ones, but he doesn't care. Now here's where it gets really sketchy. I found out that this guy did time in prison about 13 years ago. Apparently he was arrested for threatening to harm someone, false imprisonment and trying to run from the cops. That's some serious stuff, right? And now he's in charge of our whole complex? It doesn't sit right with me. But wait, there's more. This dude is always bragging about his guns. He's even got pictures on Facebook of him posing with firearms. Now, I'm no legal expert, but I'm pretty sure ex-cons aren't allowed to have guns in California. So what's the deal with that? I've tried talking to other people in the complex about this, but everyone seems too scared to do anything. It's like they're all under his thumb or something. And when I've tried to get help from outside, it's just been a big runaround. Like one time I caught this guy lurking in the bushes right outside my side window. It freaked me out, you know, so I called the cops. But when they showed up, they just said it was an HOA issue and they couldn't do anything. So I went to the HOA board, minus Mr. Crazy President, of course, and they said it was a police matter. I mean, come on, someone's gotta take this seriously, right? I've even wondered if I should report him to the FBI or something. You know, that whole see something, say something deal. But then I worry that I'm overreacting. Maybe I'm just being paranoid, but then again, with his history and the way he acts, I don't think I'm wrong to be concerned. Oh, and here's another weird thing. This guy claims to be a military veteran, right? But whenever I try to talk to him about it, he doesn't seem to know basic stuff that any vet would know. It's like he's making it all up or something. I tried asking about it on a veterans board online, but nobody seemed to care. I don't get it. Isn't stolen valor a big deal? I'm just at my wit's end here. I don't feel safe in my own home anymore. I'm constantly looking over my shoulder wondering if he's gonna snap one day. And it's not just me. I can see how tense everyone else in the complex is too. It's like we're all walking on eggshells. I've thought about moving but why should I have to leave my home because of this guy? Plus, in this market, finding another place isn't exactly easy. And who knows, maybe the next place I move to will have its own set of problems. I've tried talking to some of my neighbors about it but most of them just shrug it off. They're like, oh that's just how he is, or what can we do about it, it's so frustrating. I feel like I'm the only one who sees how messed up this situation is, and don't even get me started on the board meetings. They're a complete joke. This guy runs them like he's some kind of dictator. Nobody else gets a word in edgewise. And if anyone does try to speak up or disagree with him, he shuts them down real quick. It's not right. I've thought about running for the board myself, you know. Try to make some changes from the inside. But then I think about having to deal with this guy on a regular basis, and I just can't bring myself to do it. Plus, who knows what he might do if he sees me as a threat to his power. It's affecting my daily life too. I used to love going for walks around the complex, chatting with neighbors, enjoying the common areas. Now I find myself staying inside more and more. When I do go out, I'm always on edge, wondering if I'm gonna run into him or one of his cronies. And don't even get me started on the maintenance issues. Anything that needs fixing in the complex takes forever to get done. Unless it's for one of his buddies then it's taken care of right away. It's like we're living under some kind of corrupt regime or something. I've tried reaching out to some local tenant rights organizations, but they say that because it's an HOA, there's not much they can do. It's like we're in this weird legal limbo where nobody wants to take responsibility. Sometimes I lie awake at night wondering if I'm making too big a deal out of this. Maybe I should just keep my head down and try to ignore it all. But then I think about what could happen if this guy really loses it one day. I mean, with his history and the way he acts, it's not out of the realm of possibility, right? I've even thought about setting up some kind of neighborhood watch, you know. Get some of the other residents together, keep an eye out for each other. But then I worry that he'd see it as some kind of challenge to his authority and make things even worse. It's just such a mess and I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, I don't want to be the troublemaker, the one who's always complaining. But on the other hand, I can't just sit back and watch while this guy runs our community into the ground and potentially puts people in danger. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Stuck in this crazy situation with no clear way out. I'm open to suggestions if anyone's got any, cause I'm fresh out of ideas. I just want to feel safe in my own home again, you know. 
Is that really too much to ask? This has nothing to do with HOAs other than he happens to be president. If you see violations that are not enforced, then you can report them. The president should not be deciding who is fined. He gets one vote on the board. If you have reason to believe he is a convicted felon, call the police about the guns. If they don't care, call the state police and the ATF. It is a federal crime for a felon to possess a gun and a state crime in most states. If you suspect someone who is a convicted felon is illegally possessing firearms, here's what you can do. First, gather evidence by taking screenshots of any Facebook posts or other social media activity where they are pictured with guns. Make sure the images clearly show the person in question and the firearms. Once you have this evidence, report it to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, BATFE. They are the federal agency responsible for enforcing firearms laws, including the ban on felons owning or possessing guns. When you contact BATFE, provide as much detail as possible, including the screenshots, any relevant dates, and any other information that might help them investigate. Your actions can help ensure that firearms laws are upheld, and that communities remain safe from potentially dangerous individuals who are prohibited from owning guns. Reporting this information is a crucial step in assisting law enforcement in addressing illegal firearm possession. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe, comment, as well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.